Well, I trust you can hear me fine. I'd like to turn with you to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And read a few verses. The end of uh, chapter 9, beginning in verse 24. The apostle writes, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So the Apostle Paul tells us that we're in a fight. And the fight is uh, to be able to put our bodies, our flesh, into subjection. Now, it's interesting that the Apostle Paul realizes that um, even he himself could be disqualified. And so he uses an example from the Old Testament. Uh, this is what chapter 10 is about the example of Israel. And so he says to the Christians in Corinth that you know, these Old Testament examples that they were given for us. And so then he goes on in chapter 10 to talk about all the things that happened to the children of Israel. And that these things were a warning for us in modern day Christianity that you know, the experiences of Israel are in many ways similar to our experiences. And so he uh, gives them as a warning. Um, he says in chapter 10, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, all ate or drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Verse 6 says, now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after things as they also lusted. Uh, verse 12 says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And so what I'd like to consider this morning is we consider this um, fight that we're in, this battle for putting our flesh in subjection, which is really the, the opposite side of true Christian living or true spiritual living. You know, this is the uh, the challenge, if you will, or the, as Paul calls it, the fight to put my flesh in subjection or the other side to be filled with the spirit, to live by the spirit. So these two uh, concepts that are often contrasted side by side, uh, my flesh in subjection and uh, filled with the spirit. And we want to go back to one of the examples of Israel that certainly Paul has mentioned here. Uh, and that example is in uh, Numbers chapter uh, 13. So we want to go back to Numbers chapter 13 and and consider really for sadly for Israel where where it came off the rails, if you will. I mean, this is Israel within the first two years of their exodus out of out of Egypt, and this is where they were held back from entering the land or refusing to enter the land. And so in Numbers chapter 13, um, verse 1, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord. All of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. 
Now these were their names, from the tribe of Rumad, Shaba, the son of Zakur, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Hori, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Tephuna, from the tribe of Issachar, Abel, the son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, the son of Nun, from the tribe of Benjamin, Palte, the son of Raphu, from the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodai, from the tribe of Joseph, that is, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Sushe, from the tribe of Dan, Emil, the son of Gamali, from the tribe of Asher, Sethur, the son of Michael, from the tribe of Naphtali, Nabai, the son of Bofsi, from the tribe of Gad, Gul, the son of Mache. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshia, the son of Nun, Joshua. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rahab, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Hinnaman, Seche, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zon in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying up the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them, to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the, the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so were we in their sight let's ask the lord for his help father we're grateful today for your word we ask that you would by your holy spirit minister your word to our hearts help us to see to understand to be able to apply your word accurately to our hearts and to our lives we pray for your a blessing we pray in the precious name of the lord jesus christ amen so again the apostle paul in writing to the corinthians said that uh, he was concerned for them that they would struggle that it would be a fight for them like it would be a fight for him to put their flesh in subjection um he said that uh israel israel's wanderings all those things that happened uh, to israel would be examples that they could use uh warnings if you will to help them uh, uh help them to see the seriousness of these things help them to uh learn lessons uh from those who uh, potentially made mistakes before and certainly that's um easy to see as we um read through the account of Israel, it's easy to see the uh, 
the mistakes they made, um, you know, even in reading a passage like uh, Numbers chapter 13. Uh, it's easy to, to be uh, critical of, of um, the lack of faith or the, the lack of trust or the fear that uh, Israel, Israel expressed. Uh, no, not in Numbers chapter 13, not much said about the uh, promises of the Lord, you know, in, in this evil report that these uh, 10 spies bring back. Uh, nothing really of the uh, the promises of God in any of this, and and yet really that's um that really is the foundation of this is this chapter. You know the fact that uh, you know here's another example of uh, you know in the beginning of chapter thirteen another example of God listing uh, the twelve tribes. Uh, it's rather remarkable uh, to read through uh, not just the Old Testament but really the whole Bible and see. How many times God links the 12 tribes of uh, Israel together? And just think about that. The amount of times that God links the 12 tribes of Israel together. And just uh, give you a minute just to think about that. Think, well, um, okay, well, of course, the 12 tribes start way back in, in Genesis with uh, the 12 sons of Jacob. That's where it begins. And, and then, um, you know... Uh, Ultimately, Jacob's names changed to Israel, and so these become the 12 tribes of Israel. We've got that, and we think of, um, you know, this um, curse or blessing, whatever that might be, in Genesis chapter 49. And that's how Genesis ends with Jacob um, prophesying concerning his 12 sons. And most of that, when you read through that, most of that's negative. Um uh, and so you have that in, in the end of Genesis. And so you've got lots of emphasis on the 12 tribes there. And, of course, the 12 tribes are all listed here. Uh, you know, we have the 12 tribes listed in all the days of the prophets, right? You know, this was always uh, uh, the 12 stones that were taken out of the Jordan River. This was connected with the, the 12 tribes. And uh, they say, well, we, the Old Testament is full of, full of the 12 tribes. I mean, that's a, that's a given, you know, that uh, so the prophets were always ministering to the, to the 12 tribes. Even, even you remember when, when the, the nation or the kingdom was divided and the two and a half tribes to the South and then the, the 10 tribes to the North uh, rebelled or uh, apostated against God. You remember that even still, uh, when God would send his prophets, he always saw them as united. And so, uh, you know, we see these 12 names here. One of the things that makes us think of is, is unity. But, you know, um, it al also makes us think of, of the grace of God. You know, we, we sang of the wondrous grace of Jesus reaching uh, the most defiled. You know, um, really, that's what's going on here. Uh, with the 12 tribes, you know, this idea that that God could take uh, people like this and and move them through the Old Testament, but their history doesn't end there. Um, you know, they're uh, mentioned not infrequently in the New Testament. Um, you remember the Lord Jesus uh, at the end of his ministry talked to his uh, uh 12 disciples and he said you know those who follow me uh, one day will sit on 12 thrones uh 12 judgment seats judging the 12 tribes of israel i mean the lord jesus in his ministry he saw the the 12 tribes um you know the apostle paul in acts chapter 26 he talked about the promise uh the promise given uh, the promise given to the to the twelve tribes to the twelve tribes of Israel. He mentions that, and, and and you know I think that when we read here of these twelve tribes, yeah, it's easy to see their shortcomings and and how they uh, they they didn't um, believe the promises of God. Yeah, that that part's easy to, easy to see. But hey, listen, that doesn't that doesn't negate the fact that there were promises given to these people and that God would fulfill his promises. Uh, in fact, you know, as we say in Acts chapter 26, that's what the Apostle Paul links with the 12 tribes is the, is the fact of, of promise. You know, that um, 
that the land that was given to them was the promised land. It was promised to them, and, and they had promises from God. Now, that doesn't mean they lived in the good of it. Uh, but that doesn't doesn't negate God's promises. That's why, you know, um, C. H. Waller has this book uh, entitled uh, "The Names on the Gates of Pearl," and uh, you know, he says that uh, it's only the grace of God that could um, take these names that we read about here, or we read about in uh, Genesis chapter forty nine, or in all these various points in the Old Testament, and so often linked with shortcomings and failure um, that it's only God in his grace who could take and, um, and, and add each one of those names onto the gates of pearl. And we have that in Revelation uh, chapter 20, 21, you know, on the gates of pearl, the names are each of these uh, tribes of the 12 sons of, of Jacob. And um, that is, he says, is the, the grace of God that's able to do that. And so we see that. I mean, even in this chapter, we see the, the shortcomings and failures of, of God's people for sure. But, but against that dark background, we see the, the grace of God manifested in these, in these 12, 12 names. And so um, uh, Joshua, uh, or sorry, Moses chooses these 12, sends them in. Uh, they come. Uh, they spy out the land, and in verse 17, um, they they spy out the land, they go up, they spy out the land, and, and you wonder, well, um, you know, God had told them that it was a land uh, flowing with milk and honey, and numerous times told them it was a land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, why do they not uh, just simply believe the Lord? Well, actually, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, uh, this whole story is uh, recounted again, and and um, and in Deuteronomy chapter one, there's there's addition to the story. It actually, uh, they people come to Moses. Moses tells them what God wants them to do. They say, "Hey, we want to send people up. Uh, we want to send people up, and they can look the land over and see which way we should travel, what the cities like look like. We're going to come to and 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 it specifically says that that uh, the saying." pleased Moses, that Moses was pleased with this idea, you know, that, um, yes, you could say that um, they should have just simply trusted the Lord and went in, but the fact that they wanted to send in 12 spies to spy it out, uh, actually, um, Moses was pleased with this idea, and so he said, well, what's that all about? Well, you know, um, although God gives his promises in the word, hey, he's pleased when his people take him at his word and act upon that you know and so that's really uh what happens here for these uh these people i mean they do go in and they and they do see that what god had promised was true you know that the land really was a land uh flowing with milk and honey it was a land uh, uh that had these huge uh clusters of this huge cluster of grapes these figs and these pomegranates that it was a fruitful land and so um uh, god was pleased that his people saw his his promises and sought to walk them out you know uh, uh the fruit was uh the fruit for them was a uh, was a a down payment if you will or a, uh, a precursor of things that were to come and you know um god does that for us in the New Testament, for those who um, put their faith in in the Lord Jesus, uh, keep your finger here and turn to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter um, one. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. And so in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is um, telling us that, that, um, that the 
Holy Spirit is a down payment on what's yet to come. And, and um, you know, this is one of three or four times that the Apostle Paul writes about this. And, and really, that's what we're seeing here in, in uh, Numbers chapter 13, this idea that, that God allowed the uh, 12 spies to go in. He gave them a taste of what the land was like, gave them a down payment, if you will, on the fruit that could be expected. And, um, and sadly, now they, they didn't, didn't believe, most of the nation didn't believe the report. That didn't mean that it wasn't there. And, and so, you know, as we think of uh, the connection between uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 9 and 10 and Numbers chapter 13, or really any of these uh, connections in the life of Israel, say, hey, that's the challenge even today for us. This idea of the, that victorious Christian life, you know, that victorious Christian life that can be lived, you know, that life of, of faith. Hey, this is, is always the challenge. You know, I know I've shared before, but it's certainly worth um, worth mentioning, you know, that Watchman Nee, writing many years ago, said that, that um, most Christians spend most of their life living in carnality. And that's a, that's a challenging a challenging thought for for me and trust is a challenging thought for each one of us this idea that um the warning that the apostle paul is giving in first corinthians chapter 9 that that he sees this is the sadly the potential for any one of us if we're not careful you know in fact remember he said in uh, chapter 10 that if you don't think this could happen to you uh take heed that that we're the one or you're the one or we're the one that at that point, or I'm the one that's going to be potentially tripped up. And so uh, there's this idea of here in uh, Numbers chapter 13, hearing the hearing the promise of God and, and acting upon it. And so uh, this is what uh, this is what the two, certainly Joshua and Caleb, came back, back with this um, with this promise of uh, you know saying, hey, that what the Lord said about the land, it's all true. We have fruit to. Uh, to to verify and, and sadly the the um, tendency of the human heart of the of the nation of Israel was to believe the ten spies. You know, notice we read it that um, the ten spies said, "Yes, it's true that there's fruit in the land, but there's also enemies, giants. It's going to be hard." And so the people were prone that their their natural default position was to believe uh, what the ten said, and actually. Uh, uh, in the next chapter, it says uh, in the next chapter, and also in Deuteronomy chapter one, that it says that they that these ten spies discouraged the whole nation, right? They discouraged the whole nation uh, with their with their evil report. And um, you know, sadly, what was missing in the evil report was anything about the Lord. You know, it was just about the challenges, nothing about the Lord. I said, yeah, that what they said about the land is true, but hey, listen, there's there's giants in the land, and so the nation, the whole nation, uh, was uh, distraught by this, uh, believed the lie. Then in chapter 14, it says, uh, verse 1, all the congregation uh, lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. Verse 2, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, the Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land for their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the meeting before all the children of Israel. So sadly, um, Joshua and Caleb were not able to convince uh, the, the, as we said, the nat natural 
uh, default position of the human heart was to believe the lie rather than to believe the truth, rather than believe the, the lie of the majority, if you will. You know, that's really what it was. It was 10 against two. And, um, and um, hey, this is, this is a challenge nowadays. Hey, the, the, the New Testament church isn't, uh, isn't a democracy. It's not the, it's not the voice of the people. It's the voice of the Word of God, and uh, and you know that's the the challenge for uh, hey in the Christian life for for true spiritual leadership. You know that's what um, uh, Joshua and Caleb were, but sadly the the people never listened to it, and this became the the beginning of their uh, thirty eight years of of um, wilderness wandering, and. Um, uh, you know, even sadly, um, uh, for for um, Joshua and Caleb, they had to go with the with the nation of Israel. They, although they believed God, although they trusted God, they never got to enter in either. They had to wander um, for the thirty eight years as well. Now, thankfully, um, as um, Caleb says later on, that that although the Lord didn't deliver him out of it, He certainly delivered him through it, and. And so, you know, you have that promise that, uh, you know, that, that God is moving us as a, as a people together. And, um, hey, we're not where we'd uh, like to be. Uh, we're going to get where we uh, need to be for sure. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that the Lord in his, in his grace um, never stopped, never stopped uh, working with his people. Now there had to be this nation that, or this um, uh, generation that passed away and paid for their uh, lack of faith. Now, of course, this isn't a loss of eternal reward we're talking about. It is, as Watchman Nee talked about, this uh, living this, the Christian, the victorious Christian life. Um, and, and so we say that, um, I want to be reminded that it's the, it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God, and we see that in the, um, the children of Israel, um, we don't, we don't, um, we don't, and the, and the word of God never, never downplays their, their shortcomings, right? Um, God is, is truthful about his people. Uh, the secret to the victorious Christian life is, is um, taking uh, God at his word, uh, establishing in our, in our own lives that his promises are true, you know, that, uh, you know, you hear these stories all the time of uh, missionaries from the past who, men like Hudson Taylor, who had gone through and searched out in his years of study through the Word of God, all of God's promises, and um, they, everyone that, by every promise in the Word of God that he saw that was to be true from his own experience, he would always, uh, they say, put a, a T and a T, tried and, and tested, and... Um, and, you know, God is, is not um, um, discouraged when his people seek to take him out as where he's actually encouraged with it. He's pleased when we try to put his, um, his promises into, into practice. And so uh, we want to, like in the language of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we want uh, Israel to uh, be an example, a, a, a warning, a, 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 a challenge for us. And to make sure that uh, the things, the mistakes that they made, uh, we don't make the 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 same the same mistakes. Um, let's uh, close with a, a word of a prayer. Our Father, we're um, thankful for um, what you were able to do through your people, Israel. We're um, grateful today to be reminded that that although there are many shortcomings that um, that each of these names of 12 sons of Israel are on the gates of pearl and that uh, each of us as we someday enter into that celestial city will be reminded of the the grace that you uh, manifested um, manifested towards them, that that grace that you manifested towards them is the same grace that is being manifested towards us. Um, Lord, we just pray that um, 
we would be uh, challenged in the warnings of scripture. You would help us. We think through these things. Bless your people today, we pray in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.